Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is two Mexican hairless dogs are crossed what ratio of the hairy to hairless dogs is expected in the offspring generation and here is the four answers to choose from and uh, first of all I want to give you uh, I want to show you a photo of this dog this is uh, as you see hairless dog and uh, by the way who can pronounce the name of this dog the name of the dog has Aztec origin so it's not easy to pronounce and uh, many people just use for first letters in order to call this dog uh, but actually uh, the correct pronunciation would be Xolo it's quintly not Zolo or Xolo but Xolo it's quintly. So most of the people, as I said, just call it Sholo. In order to solve this problem, some of you may say that uh, because uh, it's not uh, stated in the problem uh, which um, the trait, whether uh, Halis is dominant trait or if it is recessive trait, uh, the answer should be D. Uh, we cannot predict the outcome of such a cross but actually if you take a close look at the answers I can say that there is one correct answer here so probably if you would say that uh, if we have 3 to 1 ratio that means that uh, we breeding two heterozygous uh, dogs and we may have this outcome or if we have uh, 3 to 1 hairy to hairless. Also, we um, cross two heterozygous dogs, but this time uh, the other trait would be dominant. So, which one to choose? And the answer is not as simple as you may think. So, uh, if we cross uh, two dogs that is going to be heterozygous, and for example, uh, dominant trait would be hairless and by the way uh, there are only four dog breeds in the world that are hairless one is Mexican hairless or Shola it's Quintly another one Peruvian Inca orchid dog uh, the third breed is American hairless terrier and the last one, Chinese uh, crested dog. And the first three I mentioned uh, has dominant trait. So dominant allele would produce dog uh, with um, no hairs, with no fur. So uh, the last one, Chinese crested dog, uh, has this trait as a recessive trait. So what we would have in our Punnett square here we have capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. But because dominant allele is also, uh, we call this uh, lethal allele, uh, homozygous dominant genotype is never, uh, can be found because um, this genotype leads to stillbirth. So if we cross two um, dogs, that is hairless, uh, the ratio in the F1 generation would be two hairless dogs to one that is uh, that has hairs. So the ratio, as you see, would be two to one. So the correct answer would be answer C. To hairless to one hairy. I recommend you to memorize this example because there is there are not so many examples uh, of the dominant trait caused by dominant allele that is also at the same time is lethal allele in the homozygous form. So uh, you may have such uh, example on your exam. So be prepared. And also I want to add that uh, this breed um, 
about at least 3,000 years old. Uh, we can find uh, this dog on many pictures from uh, ancient times in Central America, but only recently this dog were registered by dog associations as a breed. Why those it exists for 3,000 years, um, dogs associations doesn't register it as a breed. Because dog associations only register uh, breeds that is pure line. What does it mean? That means that uh, you don't have variation when you uh, self-cross two dogs that belong to the same breed. All the progeny have to have the same appearance. But as you see, this dog uh, would have uh, in litter about 66% hairless dogs and about one third or 33% uh, in a litter would be uh, puppets that would uh, have hairs and uh, phenotypically or the appearance would be very different You, if you would see uh, both puppets that is uh, hairless and those that has hairs you wouldn't be able to tell that this is the same breed so it took a very long time to recognize this breed and as I said earlier only one breed that is Chinese crested dog uh, this trait hair is uh, caused by recessive allele and that breed is uh, considered to be pure line because when we cross one homozygous recessive dog with another homozygous recessive dog of course all the progeny also going to be homozygous recessive and you wouldn't see any variation in the litter. But as you see, all the hairless dogs are heterozygous in a shallow uh, breed. And because of the lethal allele, dominant lethal allele, we have such a peculiar uh, ratio in this uh, trait, in this uh, breed. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have any questions, uh, you may uh, write them in the comment box. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.